We talked about the murder hornets a couple of weeks ago, and now you all have a lot of interest in a big lizard that seems to be getting a lot of attention online. Will Dillman with the Department of Natural Resources, thank you so much for spending a couple of minutes with us. Absolutely. All right, so the big lizard, that's what I'm calling it, but it has a technical name, right, Will? It does. This is the, the black and white tegu, or Argentine black and white tegu. All right, so it's in Georgia. A lot of people are watching this thing over in Georgia and saying Georgia's a little too close to South Carolina for us not to know what's going on with it. Sure. Yeah, this, this is a species that is from South America. It's very popular in the pet trade, and it seems to be established in a couple of counties in Georgia as well as in Florida. We are keeping an eye on what's going on in our neighbor states. Is everything we're seeing online true about this lizard, that it can grow to be up to four feet? Yep, it can get pretty large, up to four feet, maybe a little bit bigger. Uh, it lays a lot of eggs. It eats just about anything. It's an egg predator. Um, so a lot of what you're reading is accurate. So where did it come from, Will? So again, this is a species from uh, South America. It's popular in the pet trade. Likely it's been introduced as a consequence of the pet trade. Intentional releases or unintentional releases and it have allowed it to get established in the wild in Georgia. So it sounds like what you're telling me is whether people meant to do it on purpose or accidentally, they take in this pet, it gets a little too big for their family, and then they let it go? Sure. We, we think that that may be what's occurring. Uh, they get a lizard, it gets too big, they can't take care of it anymore, they intentionally release it, or it escapes. But we haven't seen anything like that in South Carolina yet. You know, very fortunately, we have not had any reports of black and white tegus in South Carolina. Um, it's something we are monitoring. We have not gotten any reports. If anyone sees one, we'd certainly like to know. Before I let you go, you've got to talk to me about responsible pet ownership. Absolutely. So hopefully, ideally, if people have these as pets, they think about it before they acquire one. And once they have one, they've committed to keeping that animal contained. If they tire of the animal or can no longer keep it, releasing it to the wild is something they absolutely do not need to do. So what happens if we have one of these and we realize this is too much pet for my family? How, what do we do from there? Sure. There's a number of resources online that have pet adoptions or going back to the vendor where they purchased it from to see what they can do to help maybe place it into another home. Okay. So we know this black and white tegu is not that big of a deal. Is there something that's keeping you up at night working for DNR right now? Not right now. Um, we're trying to, to maintain all of our functions amid the social distancing, um, but we're, we're continuing to operate. I feel like I'll be the first person you tell me, right, Will? Will do. <laughs> all right, Will Dillman, thank you so much for spending a couple of minutes with us and putting our minds at ease. You're welcome, thank you.